The title will be decided in a matter of weeks and it's time to get Shaka's predictions for how he thinks the top six is going to shake out. Shaka, we've done some talk on Manchester United recently, we've done some talk on Arsenal making the top four. Mm -hmm. Tottenham, of course, are still in battle for Europe as are Arsenal and Chelsea in the Europa League, Liverpool, of course, in the Champions League. There's a lot to play out here. How do you have this working out? How do you want to do this? One through six or do you start at the bottom? Let's start with six, shall we? All right, we start with six. A team that I thought were going to just about two or three weeks ago, I thought was going to finish in the top four, no question. But Manchester United have struggled over recent weeks. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you just wonder if that new manager Bounce has now left them. He's been critical of his squad, and, and rightly so. They've not played well enough, they've dropped points when they haven't, and the others all of a sudden have looked like they maybe have turned a little bit of a corner of their own. Manchester United well outside the, the top four now, well, well outside, that's not fair, but certainly looking in and with dwindling games and room to and, and points to make up, I just don't feel they, they, they get it done. They're asking for too many favours from too many others in the Premier League sixth. All right, so as we come into the top five then, who else misses out? Yeah, and in fifth, I'm going to say Chelsea. Mm. And I'm still undecided between Chelsea and... Arsenal, who are having fourth. But I'm going to see a Chelsea right now. Joint in points with, with, with Arsenal. Um, I just feel that what you've seen over Chelsea over maybe the last six weeks is a, a, a certain sense of inconsistency. All that being said, over recent last two weeks, I think they've been a whole lot better ever since Sarri has been happy to, to play his, his younger players, Hudson Adoy in particular, um, and Eden Hazard seeming to want to go out with, with a bang. There's a certain sense of, of, of consistency and ruthlessness about Chelsea that we hadn't seen um, six to eight weeks ago. But as of right now, I'm going to stick with my pick of uh, a few weeks ago, Chelsea finishing outside the top four, which means Arsenal are in there. And again, I don't feel there's a whole lot to give between these two. Points-wise, the big question over Arsenal is how they do on the road. And I don't think that Arsenal have had a, a better road result than in the, in the Europa League against Napoli. I hope that proves a foundation for a renewed sense of confidence on their travels because at the Emirates they've been simply outstanding. Just a word then on the Europa League for those two. Which do you see handling that a little bit better? Do you see them going further? Do you see Chelsea going further? Do you see an all-English final? Um, I, again, I'm right on the fence with, with, with this. Listen, Arsenal have a Valencia team who we, we've seen and we know play outstanding, outstanding football. That it's it's closer call, but even in that, I'm leaning Arsenal, and then Chelsea have an Eintracht Frankfurt, which might seem a little bit more straightforward. But if the last two rounds are anything to to, to go by, Eintracht Frankfurt are no pushovers. Again, Chelsea, and then in a one-off for that Champions League berth, I, I, I'm really not sure who to pick as a one-off. I'll go Chelsea, but then let's remember Unai Emery on his own record in, in this competition. I think that goes a long way as well. So give me a little bit more time, because right now I am squarely on the fence. Right. And in an effort to move on, let me just get the three before I change my mind again I'm about that. I'm going here. I'm going Spurs. <laughs> There's a lot to think about. The big challenge for Spurs is how they continue to, ha to handle the, the seesaw of bread and butter of the Premier League and a Champions League semi-final against an opponent and there's not a lot to give between Spurs and Ajax. Listen, on paper this should be all Spurs, but when you see what Ajax have done in the last two rounds, I, I, I don't see how you just write them out of this picture regardless. But there's a, a certain sense of highs that come with, with the Champions League and not necessarily a low, but it's a bread and butter. And they're not going to win it. And, and I think that is, is, a, is a job for Pochettino in how to handle the emotion of competing on, on those two levels with totally different fortunes uh, to, to, to come. Manchester City, three of the last four away from home. Liverpool, a Champions League semi-final against Barcelona to contend with. How on earth are they going to be split at the end? Yeah, right now I think City continue to be in pole position. And I think they hold on, and just. Liverpool showed no real signs of wavering. Yes, the Champions League does not help, and competing against Barcelona, for the same reason that I expressed about Spurs. Um, but City have the points right now. 
I just feel that City see this through. They somehow deal with the disappointments of going out in the Champions League against Spurs yet again um, and hold on just. I think Liverpool will push them right the way to the very end, last kick of the season. That won't be decided until then. A one-point difference for you. Yep. So you don't just get the positions. You get exactly how many points are going to be between yeah. Manchester don't, City and Don't Liverpool. go putting your mortgage on it. No, don't. Don't. <laughs> Join us next week for a different prediction. <laughs>